In this video, part of a much longer interview with Andy Patterson for his channel, Patterson Adjuster Training, I talk about the cost of cat property field deployments and if $5 a gallon gas will make running storm claims not worth it. Starting now. You're watching Adjuster TV, adjusters first. Adjuster TV is brought to you by Kaplik. Learn all about E&O and other insurance for adjusters at cplic.net slash adjuster TV and by Adjuster TV Plus. Get unlimited access to a growing library of the best adjuster training videos created by the most trusted name in claims, Adjuster TV at adjustertvplus.com. Hey, Matt here. Welcome to Adjuster TV, where we help you build a rewarding career as an independent insurance adjuster so that you can help people during natural disasters and earn a great living doing it. My favorite recent comment comes from Charlie P who says, yeah, man, this Matthew guy really did us all a favor with this channel. Thanks, Chuck. Before we jump into this clip, I wanna let you know that I've got a really big announcement coming in the next few days. So if you don't wanna miss that video or any of our other new videos, be sure to subscribe to Adjuster TV right here on YouTube. All right. Here's what I think about $5 a gallon gas and the high cost of travel as an adjuster right now. And so with gas prices over $5 a gallon, I was thinking the other day, how can independent adjusters make any money? And do you think the firms are going to maybe give them a fuel offset or just their split? So that's a good question. And I actually was talking to a firm about that yesterday. Um, and I think that's going to be carrier dependent. So the carriers are going to be the ones that are going to say, you know, we recognize that it's you're it's it's now you're now paying to like come and work for us. But I don't. I think even in worst case scenario, that's not really the case. But um, what they said was is that it depends on the carrier, and it's probably going to depend on the carrier getting a lot of pressure from um, the adjusters or the firms. You know, saying, "All right, we're at a tipping point here. We, we, it's the, the gas is out six seventy five a gallon. We, I hope it, it's this has got to stop. That's the whole other conversation. Say it's it gets over six dollars a gallon, or it pushes seven dollars. In some parts of the country, it's it's over seven dollars a gallon on the coast. Certainly, um, they're going to start. I think they'll start to address that because there's they're not they won't not be able to this because people will walk off the storms or they'll you know they'll make a lot of noise about it. And adjusters are if nothing else, they, they can be vocal about stuff for sure. Because we're in independence and it's like, well, if you're not going to do it, I'll go work for somebody else. But they'll have to, they'll probably, they'll certainly have to do something. Part of me thinks, okay, if I was an independent right now, I would say I only want to do virtual assignments. And so have you heard from the firms? Are they having uh, a hard time uh, staffing people in the field because of the gas prices? I think that they're having a hard time staffing people in the field. But it's been ongoing for at least the last 18 months. So it's not, I wouldn't say that it's, I, I, I don't know that there's any like increase in that from the gas prices. Um, I would assume that maybe there is. But I do know that, you know, when I hear people say that there's, you know, we're industry saturated, I know for f absolute fact that that's 100% incorrect. Because um, every firm that I've talked to, and I've talked to dozens, I ask them these questions. You know, uh, how are you guys doing on, on hiring, recruiting? And stuff? man, we're desperate for people. Man, if you can put the word out, if you can, we need people so bad. Everybody said, like, literally everybody says that. Every single, hmm. every single, there's no company that's like, no, oh, we're good on people. It's, nobody said that. So, so if you're a, a good independent adjuster and you're unemployed right now, it's because you want to be, I guess. I'm, I'm going to put a draw a line in the sand and put a little tough love out there and say that's absolutely correct. You got if you if you're if you're got all you have is your license and you have a level two, level 1 exactimate, you're going to get on rosters but you're going to sit at the bottom of the you're going to be at the long far end of the bench until you start getting good training in hand um, and co calling these people back and you're bugging them and you're going to their networking events, you're doing you're doing this work. It's going to cost money cuz you're going to have to pay for gas and hotels. All that stuff's more expensive. But if you don't do that and you're wondering why your phone, other people are going to Minnesota for a storm or to Dallas for a storm and you're not, that's why. You got to be, you can't just, it's not a show up and get paid kind of a deal. You got to do the work to, 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 to get the work. And then, because, because once you, they know this, because once you get on the storm and they give you the work, 
they know because you're unprepared that you're not going to be able to do the work. So they're not even going to put you in that position. Um, you have to be able to put yourself in a position where you're able to actually get the work done, close, close files. And once you get to that point, you can demonstrate that you can do that, then they will put you to work. Um, one question, um, Dave Ramsey always says pay cash for things, and he has a, a question and answer show. Since Dave Ramsey's not here, I'm going to ask you this question. So I read a report the other day that hotel um, expenses or hotel costs have went up 37%. If you're an adjuster out there, do you think, would you go pay cash for a, uh, a modest travel trailer um, versus staying in hotels? Would you recommend that or not? Not necessarily. It dep- I think it depends on where the person is in their career. So if, if the brand spanking new and they're, they got their license, they got their training, you know, they're ready to actually run claims, but they haven't done it yet. They haven't made any money doing this work yet. I'm not going to tell anybody to buy it, to spend any money on anything other than making sure that their vehicle is roadworthy. Um, but I think with hotels, you know, four, thir- 37% is the average, first of all. Second of all, um, so, you, can, you know, depending on where you go, if you go to Mitchell, South Dakota, it's probably not going to be, you know, I mean, it's, if you're right on the interstate, it's going to be expensive. Um, but you're going to be able to find, you can find mom and pops, you can find Airbnbs, um, you can negotiate long-term rates. I've done it lots of times um, at like, stay, we stayed at Stay Bridges because they were ni- they're a nice hotel and they're like $130. 10 years ago, they were $130 a night, but I don't think I ever paid more than $65 a night with a long-term, I'd go, you know, ch- to check in and ask them if they had uh, a, an account executive there that does like, you know, like long-term, like, you know, B2B stuff. Oh yeah, yeah, let me just get, you Karen, can you come here please? Talk to Karen. Oh yeah, so you're gonna be here for at least a month? Okay, and yeah, at least a month, you know, depending on back then it was like at least a month, probably more like three, you know, what can we work out? Well, I can do, you know, 50, 4, 39, you know, kind of a thing, right? You, you're able to, you can, you can negotiate. Not everybody's going to do it. And if it's just like the, the teenager that's, that's their third day on the job, they're not going to have a clue. Um, but sometimes you can call the 800 number, you know, for those places and say, hey, um, I'm going to be doing a, lo- a longer term thing. We've got, you know, business in the area for, for several weeks. What can we work out? And maybe, you know, there's four of us, right? You know, maybe can we get a, a deal on some rooms or whatever? Because if, if nobody takes the room, the room makes zero, right? So it's... Yeah, good you know. point. Um, so I would say it, when, when a person wants to decide to, to do the RV thing, um, they got to understand that that's... It, it, it is convenient and it is... Um, it can be enjoyable, but it's still going to be a tool like that, that adjust your vehicle... And like your laptop and like every all the other stuff that you use just for work. Um, a lot of times people will say, oh, well, you know what? I, I'm getting into this and I've got some extra money from severance or from my old job or whatever. You know, or I'm going to cash out some savings. And because uh, I know, some, you know, I saw somebody said, do RVs. Well, they say, you know, honey, which one should we get? You know, we think about, you know, we're going to go to Glacier. We're going to go to the Grand Canyon and we're going to we, we can use it to go to the beach. And we can use it for this, that and the other thing. Forgetting that the kids are in school uh, most of the year, and when they want to go on their big two-week family vacations in the summertime, what else is happening in the summertime? Oh, you're going to be in that RV on a storm site in Fargo, right? Or Jackson, Mississippi, or whatever, wherever it is, right? It's not going to be. You're not going to use it for family vacations unless you go south and over Christmas or something. I tell people, I say. So I would spend even less money on that than I would on the car. I would say, you know, if these days everything costs a million dollars. So it's this is like not insane inflation times. Take five thousand bucks, find what you can get for five thousand dollars, and get that. If it's twenty five years old, if it's thirty five years old, you can replace the fridge in it. You can rewire it yourself. Easy. Like get a nineteen foot little travel trailer that you can pull with a, a, a like a mid sized SUV. Like my Forerunner could pull five thousand pounds. You know, that's probably the, probably wouldn't pull, like, you, you might want to get a pickup truck there. I, we'll just say that because of the towing capacity of a pickup. You want to have room in your towing capacity. Anyway, beat up, old, nobody can see it. 
right? And it doesn't have to have a bunch of bedrooms, doesn't have to have a bunch of slides on it, doesn't have to have five bathrooms. All it needs is a bed and a little booth where you're going to have your laptop open and you're going to eat your TV dinner, right? And then maybe a TV, you know, both a little TV on the wall, take out that, that old tube TV and throw it away, right? Because that's all you're going to do in the thing, right? You're going to take a break and put, put on the game, right? That's it. That's all you need. You don't need to have like you're not you're not going to on safari. You don't need to have like survival things for it's all it is is a is a bed for you to sleep in to keep you out of the elements and to save you money, right? And and to do to do your work, right? A lot of times that one of the challenges with the RV thing that, that I found was that depending on where you go, not everybody's got very good internet. Right. So you're going to get like and you're sharing Internet with a bunch of bunch of a lot of people at, at RV campgrounds are senior citizens. And they're going to be like if they have their grandkids over or whatever, everybody's on their gadgets and they're going to be using up all the bandwidth on the, the, the RV parks Internet. Um, we just got Starlink for RV um, for our pro- site because we're still on a wait list for the residential version. It works great. It's like 100. And, we have like 180 megabits down and like I've had up to like 70 up. Which is more than I get 180? in this office. Wow. Oh, yeah. Two, I've had 200 plus, I think, a couple times. And it's you can move it wherever you want. You can go anywhere in the country you want to with it. So you can get really good internet that way. And, you know, that's that's my thought on the RV thing. And I think it's a good way to go, but it's it's not the way to go first. With all these things, a person needs really needs to say, you know what? I've done two or three storms. I love this. This is uh, this is. This is the way to go. Now, let me take Matt's advice. Let me take Andy's advice. And, you know, at the minimum, our advice was just wait to do these things. When you get to the position where you've got the money to do this stuff and you've decided you're all in on this, you come up with your own way to do it, right? Maybe the RV isn't the way to go. Maybe you get a sprinter, right? I don't know. I mean, it's, you know, there's there's all different ways to kind of skin this cat for sure as far as like how you want to run the clan. That's the beauty of it is that you're running your own little business. So you can kind of do, you can do it however you want to. Our advice is just be smart about it. Don't be spent. You're already going to have to spend a bunch of money on your training. Focus on that first. If for nothing else, make sure you got a laptop, a ladder, a camera, and good training that teaches you how to do this. And, and it sets you up for being able to practice this stuff. And then once you get going with it, once you've, you know, you've, you've, you've gone through the gauntlet, you've, you've survived the trial by fire, that's when you say, all right, you know what? I'm going to start to kind of like tweak this the way I really, really want to do it and the way it makes sense to me. So I'm going to get a travel trailer or I'm going to get a, a motorhome. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. Do it your own way. But the, the basic advice, spend the money on travel up front, use what you have, and then Go hog wild on it later, you know, when and, and post a picture of your like redone, you know, Renault like RV office on, you know, your adjuster claims central with all your monitors and everything. Put that on internet after you're like actually earning money from doing claims. Yeah, that's a great point. If you're going to put money anywhere, put it in training. So, what do you think? Will super expensive fuel and travel expenses keep you from taking property field deployments? Let's talk about it in the comments. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, give us a like and a subscribe. And as always, thank you so much for watching and have a great storm. What's up, Adjuster? Are you brand new to claims? Have you had people tell you that you've got to learn how to use Xactimate to do hurricane, hail, tornado, wildfire, wind, or water claims on houses and businesses? Well, they're absolutely right. You must know Xactimate X1 to be able to work for most companies in our industry and to give your new high paying career its best chance. Adjuster TV has put together a comprehensive Xactimate training that takes you from how to download and install Xactimate to building sketch diagrams, documenting your file, how to import and label photos, and so much more. And it's all done with signature Adjuster TV style. No frills, everything you need, and nothing you don't. And not only that, 
It's not gonna cost you an arm and a leg because it's included as part of your Adjuster TV Plus membership. You're not gonna have to travel to take this training in person. You can do it at your own pace and you'll be able to rewatch the trainings whenever you need a refresher for as long as you're a member. If you've never used Xactimate before, then you need this complete step-by-step -step training exclusively inside of Adjuster TV Plus. Join now at adjustertv.com slash x1. Do not show up to a job interview at an IA firm without Xactimate X1 installed on your system and you not knowing how to use it. Access this training and dozens of hours of other independent property claims training video series right now at adjustertv.com slash X1.